Okay. <laughs> We're back again. Sorry about that. We are going to give this another shot. Let's see if we can find our video. Good evening. It's Monica from Life is Art. And there we go. I can see my video now. No idea if that first attempt was working whatsoever. <laughs> and my camera is all crooked and yeah, lots of funness. Let me just kind of compensate by moving my versamat around. Hey, Heather, nice to see you're watching. It's Wednesday, and let's create. We're going to be making a triple easel card and um, just trying to get everything sorted here a little bit. If you're watching live, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching later on replay, you can say replay. So, a triple easel card. I actually made one of these during um, Stash Dash uh, a few weeks ago. And so I thought I would come on and show you how I did that. And so, first off, we're going to be creating our easel card base. And so I'm starting with a piece of sapphire cardstock that has been cut to eight and a half by seven. So the first thing we need to do is score it to create our center fold for our card. This is going to be created on the landscape, but we need to fold it. So along this seven inch side, we're going to score it at, oops, I'm not holding on to things, three and a half. So just going to make a score line at three and a half and then we're going to fold our card in half. Now you can obviously use just a pre-made card base for this, which is what I did with my first card. But for this one, I thought I would kind of jazz it up a little bit and just lining up my corners, making sure my scoring was nice and straight and creasing it on that three and a half inch fold. So we're going to be creating this on the landscape, as I said. So our fold is going to be at the top. And the first thing we need to do is a little bit of cutting. Hey, Heather and Laura, nice to see you're watching. Um, I don't know if you guys found me when I started earlier, but um, <laughs> I was having technical difficulties. I could not find myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our card base and we're actually going to open it back up. And I want to remember that this is the front of my card. And what we're going to do on the front of the card is we are going to cut this in two places. And we're going to cut from the open edge to the crease. Okay, now I do not have the best trimmer for this because my trimmer is a rotary blade. And so I can't exactly tell where I stop cutting, but I'm getting pretty good at guessing. So if you have a trimmer that has a straight blade with has a little notch or a point to tell you, you know, what measurement to stop at, you're going to go from the bottom up to the crease, which is at the three and a half inch mark. But we want to trim at two and seven eighths from this left side. So two and seven eighths. So I'm going to line it up with two and seven eighths on my trimmer. And then I'm going to trim from this bottom edge, and I'm kind of looking at it sideways, to try and get my blade. I'm going to need to go a little bit farther, a little bit farther, a little bit farther, and then too much. <laughs> That's always how it is. So I've trimmed up to that center crease at two and seven eighths from the left side. Okay, and now I want to do a second um, cut, again, from the bottom edge to that center crease on the front panel of the card, and we're going to be at five and seven eighths. So I'm lining up over here at five and seven eighths on my trimmer, making sure everything's nice and flat. And again, I'm going to go from this bottom edge to the center crease. So again, I'm going to kind of lean myself over here so I can see my blade as much as I can and I need to do it just a smidgen more oh too far <laughs> that's always how it goes so far so far so far too far but pretty good pretty good so now we have two slits on here 
Although, for some reason, visually, this is looking a little odd. Two and seven eighths. Two, yeah, I've got my measurement wrong. <sighs> I wrote my measurements down. Two. Hmm. Let me double check a measurement here. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Okay, let's just double check what we did. Two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths. Yeah, we've just kind of done a little something awkward there. Let me see. You know what? We're just going to go with it. <laughs> We're going to go with it. And when I, um, when I post the measurements, I'll give you the correct measurement for those. For now, we're going to make it work. Um, <laughs> gotta love it. Okay, so we're going to also do some creasing. So the first thing we want to do is grab our ruler, and we're going to crease from this intersection here with the cut line and the score line, and we're going to crease down to this outside line. Okay? So we're going to go from here down to this outside corner. Sorry, corner, not line just on the diagonal, going down towards the left. Then we're gonna come over to this last panel and we're going to do the opposite. We're going to start up at this um, intersection between the, the cut line and the score line and we're gonna crease on the diagonal to this outside right corner. You know, the trouble with my measurements was when I did the first iteration of this, <laughs> I just did it by the by guess and by golly method. And yeah, so it's probably not very precise on the first one. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is we need to score this um, panel, the center panel, in half horizontally. So the easiest way to do that is to um, line it up on my verse mat, I guess, going this way. And we want to score it at one and three quarters, which is basically in the center. So you could just fold it in half. That might be the easiest thing. <laughs> Me and my measurements tonight. So we're going to take this and we're going to fold it to the inside of the card. And we're just going to line it up with that center crease, just like that, and fold it down. So we're just folding it in half, just like that. Okay. So we're creating our easel card. So you know how an easel card stands up. So there's our center one. And now this one we're going to crease as a mountain fold along that score line like that. And there's our second easel. Now your cardstock's going to be stiff for the first little while. There's our second easel. And then our last one we're going to crease, creating a mountain fold. So this angle folds to the inside, like so. And that is our third easel. So we're creating one that's kind of normal in the center, so it's straight across. And then these two on the outside have a really dynamic sort of angle to them. Okay. So now um, I may have to adjust a little bit with my pattern papers at this point just because the measurements are a little bit off. See, this one is going to probably look a little too small because <laughs> I messed up with my measurements. And this one is probably a little bit large, but we'll make it work. Okay. So for these, and I'm not going to give you the measurements right now because these measurements are going to be wrong. Um, they're probably closer to what this one is, um, but we're going to start out with two rectangles. And what we want to do is trim these from corner to corner. I know this is a great tutorial where I'm sitting here telling you my measurements are all wrong, but that's how it happens on live video. 
and I don't seem to have my little trimmer, so I'm going to bring my big trimmer back in. And we need to cut the same angle that we had on our card base. So we're going to go from the top right corner to the lower left. And so we're going to set it on our trimmer like this, top right corner to the lower left, sitting on our cut line, and we're going to trim. Now, because this particular paper, which is from the Gnomes for Winter collection, gorgeous blues in this collection, might I just say, this paper is multi-directional. So you can save this piece for another card, okay? So um, it won't work on this card because it won't give us the right angle. Let me show you what I mean. Um, I only want to put the pattern on this side and this one, and this one's not going to work in any way unless I flip it over. But I want the same pattern on both ends, and so that's why I have a second piece of the pattern paper. Okay? And um, let me just make sure. There we go. And now this one I want to cut on an angle from the top left to the bottom right. Hey, Levine! Nice to see you're watching. Yeah, Laura, I know. <laughs> Live video. You just have to laugh at yourself because things will always inevitably um, not work out quite right. So I'm going to start lining up papers on here. And then in the center, we have a smaller piece of paper. And let me see if this is actually the right measurement. Nope, it's a little off too because these two panels ended up being wider. But that's okay. That it is what it is. <laughs> and then we're going to come in with some contrasting cardstock just to add a little bit of extra pizzazz. So the same size that these rectangles were, we're going to have cardstock in that same size. And so this one is going to go in this upper left spot on this card, this upper left spot, sorry, I just realized where I'm pointing. You can't see because I'm off the edge of the screen because our silly screen is vertical. And so we're going to cut this one the same way we cut the pattern from the top right to the bottom left, just like that. And this time we want the top piece. So that's going to go on there like that. Now again, this I could flip around, but it won't match on this side. So we have to have a second rectangle to create this other side. And this time we're going from this top left corner to the bottom right. And I'm using peach cardstock to coordinate with this. And just like we've been adding peach cardstock on the outside edges, we're going to add a piece of peach cardstock that matches that one that we added in the center. And same size. Same size, which I'm not going to tell you yet. It's going to be a mystery. It's going to be a surprise. A surprise. When I post the video, I will give you the correct measurements and uh, when I post the photos. So now we have a whole bunch of pieces we need to attach to our card. I think the easiest for this would be liquid glue because we've got triangles and triangles are notoriously difficult for attaching with um, tape runner. At least they are to me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and add these onto our easel panels. And we're just going to center them. We're going to leave an equal amount of the sapphire cardstock around the edge if we can. There we go. This one's escaping underneath. It's running away. It says, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> stay away. Stay away. All right. And we're going to add that pattern paper on there. I love this blue that looks like a snow flurry. If you haven't had a chance yet to take a look at the Gnomes for Winter collection, um, if you go on the website under promotions, you will see it there. So remember we had Gnomes for Autumn and um, gorgeous fall patterns there. So this is now the Gnomes for Winter and you're getting kind of the hint that we're going to have some gnomes for every season this year. 
lots of fun. I am not the biggest gnome fan, but I was a sucker for all these blues. And also the stamp set that is available that has sentiments. We're going to use that today as well. And it was gorgeous. I really like the sentiments on it. So, of course, I had to get that. Sure did. There's also a sticker sheet that you can get with the pattern papers. So I got that because stickers are fun. There's a bunch of things in the collection. All right. Our last piece of peach cardstock going on. And that one's a tight squeeze because <laughs> this side is smaller. And there we go. All righty. Now, our next step is to add some decorative elements. And so for this, I decided snowflakes. Why not? Because we've got some lovely snowflakes. Now, I am using a retired snowflake thin cut called Winter Flurries. However, I don't yet have them, but in the newest um, the catalog, the November-December catalog, there are some um, snowflake thin cuts and snowflake um, stencils and snowflake embossing um, called Snowflakes um, Slimline Embossing Folder and Stencils and the Snow Cute Stamp and Thin Cuts have snowflakes in them as well. So lots of fun ways to get snowflakes. But I had these ones in my stash, so that's what we're using this evening. So I've got a couple of the same snowflake. This is the largest one out of that trio. And then I also have a smaller one. So those are going to be some embellishments on there. But I also want to stamp out my sentiment. So I'm just going to scooch these out of the way to do my sentiment first. And do, 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 do. It would be helpful if I could show you the stamp set that I want to show you. <laughs> I've got my sentiment already loaded on my block, and now I don't see, there's my stamp set. So this is the stamp set that you can get for lovely sentiments with this Gnomes for Winter um, collection. And it's got wishing you a delightful Christmas season and a happy new year. And that's what we're going to be using on this card. Then there's also may your days be filled with cheerful moments, twinkling lights, and the warmth of loved ones by your side. As well as may the joy of the season fill your heart with warmth and laughter. Merry Christmas. And then over here we have wishing you a season filled with love, laughter, and joy that brightens your days. And may your celebration bring warmth to your heart and happiness to your home. And I just thought those were really, really nice sentiments. And so I'm going to be stamping this on a piece of sapphire cardstock. But we're not just going to stamp it. We're going to heat emboss it. So I've got my white embossing powder, my Versamar ink, Mark ink, my anti-static pouch. We're going to give a little rub on our card just to get any of the static off of there. Before we do our stamping, let me also grab the foam from the stamp set to tuck under there. I also need a scrap piece of paper that I can collect my embossing powder on. So let's tuck that under there as well. It's always good to get everything set out before you start with the heat embossing. We've got our embossing powder, our Versamark, and my heat tool is plugged in over here. Let's grab that so it's on hand. Alrighty, so we're going to stamp out this sentiment. Make sure it's seasoned because it's a new stamp. Then we're going to load it up with some Versamark ink. You'll notice that I'm holding on to my Versamark stamp, um, stamp pad, and that's because the Versamark is kind of sticky. And so... Um, when you're stamping on it or, you know, inking up your stamp, it has a tendency to lift and clatter around. So I always try to hold on to it. Now we can get rid of our foam because we don't want to get embossing powder all over that. We've got our scratch paper here. Some people have a, a nice container that they do embossing into that can funnel it back into 
the um, the container. I know my mom uses uh, coffee filters, the basket style coffee filters, and that works good. I just go ahead and grab whatever scrap paper is handy and use that, and sometimes it dumps it off on the side. <laughs> and then we always put our lid back on our embossing powder because that stuff, if it goes, it goes and makes a mess. So there we can see we've stamped up our sentiment. It's kind of dry and um, powdery. But as soon as we get some heat going on this, it will start changing to a lovely shiny white sentiment. And so we'll just give it a second to warm up. And as that warm air from the heat tool swirls around, it's going to start melting the embossing powder and working our way across. There we go, and then we can turn it around and work our way back across the top. And that looks good. Quick and easy. Wishing you a delightful Christmas season and a happy new year. Now, you know me, and you know that we cannot complete this entire project without some fussy cutting. So that's what we're going to do with our sentiment. We're going to do a little bit of fussy cutting. So I've got my favorite scissors here. And I want to get rid of the um, little powdery bits from the anti-static pouch that are still clinging to my cardstock. So I'm just going to do my famous technique of rubbing the paper on my pants to remove that little dusty look. And there we go. And then we can come in with our scissors and do some trimming. Now I'm not going to go in all the ins and outs. I'm just going to kind of do a basic shape around this. Like so. And I'm using my fun favorite scissors. These are the non-stick micro tip scissors my favorites for fussy cutting and I'm leaving a halo of the sapphire cardstock as I work my way around now on this top bit I am going to kind of go around the shape just because I want to create a little bit of shaping at this point and all the way around can you just take your time and work your way there we go now these other ones we're just going to kind of step our way down you want to pivot your paper when you're doing this cut off some excess down and then the last bit and then to join it instead of cutting a square we're just going to roll around the corner a little bit so we get a nice edge on that and then we can come over here we're going to use some foam tape to add on our embellishments so let's just grab this one first we're going to have this one kind of sticking up above and so I just want some foam tape on the bottom edge and I think we're just going to put one big chunk all the way across Keeping it simple. There we go. Like that. Now let's see if we can put it on straight. How about we start out with a straight card and add that on there like that. Okay. Now the reason why I'm putting it in the center um, is because when it's popped up, I want it to pop up nice, but I want it to be within the confines of the card um, when it's laying flat because it's got to go it's got to go in an envelope, right? So on here, I'm going to add this, and I'm actually going to add this stuck to the back of um, of our sentiment. But I want to use foam tape on it as well, just to create a little bit of space between the sentiment and the snowflake. So I only need to add a little tiny strip 
of foam tape just to the front of a couple of the pieces of the snowflake. It's always a little bit tricky when you're working with tiny little strips of foam tape because it wants to stick to everything. Are you guys looking forward to the snow? I heard there was some sort of snow warning over in the Durham region today. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have had sort of flurry activity here in Brampton the last couple days, little flurries coming down, but nothing of any consequence and nothing has actually stayed. So there we go. We've got that tucked in, just kind of going right up to the edge of that, um, uh, the edge of the card. And then over here, we're going to add these onto the fronts. And again, let's use some foam tape. So I'm going to put it kind of at a little angle there. So these three ends of the snowflake can have some foam tape. So we'll cut tiny little snips of foam tape to accomplish that. One, two, And three, just like that. Remove our backing. Now, I had a great debate with myself earlier today about whether I should do this with white daisy or whether I should do it with silver glitter paper. And I ended up deciding on the white daisy just because... Um, Silver, I thought, might kind of overpower everything. And I really, really like that blue um, pattern paper. And I didn't want to detract too much from the fat pattern paper. I just wanted to kind of enhance it. In fact, I was looking at my ballerina cardstock, the retired ballerina cardstock, and hemmed and hawed at that. But then I thought, well, that's kind of not fair because if y'all uh, fell in love with it, you can't get it anymore. So... That seemed a little unfair, but I may make a few more of these um, just for Christmas cards to send out using some of that ballerina cardstock, which is kind of a... It did have a little bit of a pinkish hue to it, but it was mostly because it was iridescent -y, and that would also look very pretty with the peach or ballerina cardstock, frankly. There we go. And peel the backing off. So again, I've added a little bit of foam tape to three of the little snowflake arms. Oh, I see though a bunch of comments have come in. Hey, Levine. Um, every time I went to her, the thin cut was out of stock. Yes, the gnomes. The, the thin cut keeps going out of stock. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you're cutting these same snowflakes. Aren't they so pretty? Um, they're the only, like, die-cut snowflakes I own, and so they get used a lot. I just saw that my foam tape's a little bit off the edge. See if I can adjust that. There we go. So now we have our three little easels here. But as, if you're familiar at all with easel cards, you will know that we need something to hold these up because they're just going to want to keep falling. And so um, on the, the first time I made this card, I used um, the acrylic um, letters to create a word or a, or a phrase across there. But for this one, I decided to just use another piece of the pattern paper and this one is the one that has the words all over it and so it's got things like it's cold outside burr let it snow snug snow much fun all that kind of fun stuff so i thought that really kind of looked nice with this there's also stripes on the back side but i thought hmm, did i want to do some inking no i think i'll leave it I don't think I'll leave it, but I am going to pop it up with some foam tape because we need to create some height for our card. I was just going to run a whole strip along there, but maybe I won't. Maybe I will be a little bit more uh, thrifty with my foam tape. <laughs> 
sometimes you gotta be thrifty with your foam tape. So we're just gonna add some pieces along here. We just need enough to create the lift. There we go. Maybe one more like that. We need some lift in order for these to have something to rest again. If we put it down flat, it would not do that. So this piece, I can give you this measurement. It's six inches by one inch. And we'll go ahead and stick this down. Now I'm second guessing my decision not to ink the edges. Do you ever do that where you make a decision and then you're like, hmm, hmm, <laughs> and I think I'm going to do it. So let me just finish taking these off. And let me grab, boing. let me see, where's my sapphire ink? Way down at the bottom of the stack. There we go. We've got our sapphire ink to match our cardstock. And I need a little foam wedgie that's been cut out of our round sponge. Just load that up with some sapphire. And then I can ink my edges as much or as little as I want. And I think that's going to make my pattern paper have a nice finished look to the edge. Since I'm not doing uh, like a layer of cardstock, which I could have done, I could have added a layer of cardstock under there. It would give it a little bit more strength, I suppose, than just the pattern paper. But I decided to just go with pattern paper. All right, now, some of the words are going this way and some of them are going this way. So I'm going to go with putting it in the, the way that it's most likely to have most of the words. And then we're just going to center this here on our card. Let me see, that's an inch and a quarter in, an inch and a quarter in, and about a quarter of an inch up. That seems good to me. And then now our three easels will stand up. And sometimes the easels get a little bit too bent. There we go. They need to actually sit down. Oops, I bent my, my poor little snowflake got bent. And I think it would be lovely to add a little bit of bling to this card because no card is complete without a little bit of bling. And so let's bring in some bitty sparkles and some clear sparkles and add just a little bit of something something to our card. There we go. I grab my piercing tool. Alrighty. Let's add a little sparkle down here. Let me see. One, two, three. We're going to create a little triangle down here. And then let's also add a little sparkle up here and I'm going to lay it down flat for this. And so we're going to put one there, one there, because we've got those beautiful snowflakes and little, um, you can see the little dots, the little splatters there and I think just adding a little bit of bling on there would be super pretty. And then let's add couple you can even put them right on top of those little dots that are on there put a couple over there and maybe one big one there and one there. <laughs> Just trying to think where I want it. Let's put one right on the snowflake. Look at that. Right on the on the arm of the snowflake. Why not? All right. I think that looks super pretty and I love the way that that looks. Now, because this card stands up like this and you can see a lot of the inside paper, 
If you want to have your, your writing inside your card, you may want to put um, some white cardstock here, or you can add white cardstock to the entire back panel of your base, and that would give you lots of space for writing a message that you don't necessarily have to have showing when it's on display. Now, if I pick this up carefully, I should be able to give you a bit better view of what it looks like from the front with those really fun angles coming up from the sides, those nice snowflakes that stand up. This would also be really cute if you wanted to send um, a photo to maybe a grandparent or something. You could add the photo in the center and then have some embellishment on either side and that would look really cute. And when you close it down, you've got all of that fun um, snowflakes and the peach cardstock showing. So it looks really pretty when it first comes out of the envelope as well. And then all you gotta do, pop it up and enjoy. Now, let me just show you the original one I created so you can see another version of this. And so I created this one with the Operation Smile stamp set. You may have seen it posted um, from one of our stash dashes. So again, the center pops up and then the two sides come out. So I um, stamped and colored the little rainbows and the clouds. We've got the little sunshine there, the word smile. And then remember I said I used acrylic letters. So I've got enjoy life. So I've got smile, enjoy life as... Um, the um, sentiment on this one as it stands up like that. And then of course, when it closes down, you can see all the pretty decorations. So there are two different versions of that triple easel card and be sure to check below the list of products um, when I post the photo and I will put the proper measurements in <laughs> for all the cutting and pieces for the U. All right, I hope you enjoyed seeing that come together, even though it was a little a, a little off, but <laughs> you get yourself the idea of how it goes together. All right, have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you again soon. Toodaloo. Bye.